Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Harry Potter, Sirius Black, Quidditch, Gringotts, and a flying broomstick. However, we're not just going to be talking about any old broomstick, we're going to be discussing the Firebolt, where a muggle may see a broom as an object that they dread taking out of the closet, a wizard sees something much more special, an opportunity to fly. We hear a few different brooms name dropped throughout the books and films. The most notable reference to a broom occurs in the beginning sequences of The Philosopher's Stone, when Hagrid first takes Harry to Diagon Alley. When they walk past the broom shop, children are gawking at a broom through the window. Whoa, look at it, the new Nimbus 2000, Harry overhears as he walks by. And while the Nimbus 2000 was a prominent broom of its time, it wasn't long before it was superseded by a newer, better broom. The Firebolt. The Firebolt was released in 1993, and it quickly became known as the best one around. Of course, Lucky Harry eventually gets one, a gift from his godfather, Sirius. There is something I never got round to telling you during our brief meeting. It was I who sent you the Firebolt. Crookshanks took the order to the Owl Office for me. I used your name, but told them to take the gold from Gringotts Vault number 711, my own. Please consider it as 13 birthdays worth of presents from your godfather. My question is, how on earth was Sirius able to use funds from his own vault to pay for the broom? Sure, he gave written direction to take the money out of his vault, 7-Eleven, but how was that order ever allowed to be processed? Sirius Black, at this point in time, was still the most wanted wizard in Britain, so surely a request to take money from his vault would have begun ringing alarm bells, right? Why didn't Gringotts question the request? Why wasn't the Ministry notified that a request for funds from Sirius Black's vault had been made? How was it possible that Sirius was able to purchase Harry's broom via third party? Why did Gringotts pay out? In fact, there are a lot of unanswered questions here. I think that the most logical answer for all of this is that A. The Ministry doesn't keep or isn't able to keep tabs on Gringotts' activity, and B. Gringotts aren't necessarily obligated to alert the Ministry with regards to suspicious activity inside of the vaults. This is reinforced by a quote from Griphook in Chapter 15 of The Deathly Hallows, The Goblin's Revenge. What about you, Griphook? Similar reasons, said the higher-voiced goblin. Gringotts is no longer under sole control of my race. I recognize no master. What this suggests is that perhaps the goblins of Gringotts were not previously subjected or held liable by wizarding law. This would mean that, as I guessed, they are not compelled to share the knowledge about Sirius to any third party, including the Ministry of Magic. Gringotts is an impartial institution. They don't judge their clientele. They simply control the flow of gold in and out. This is why they hold the gold and prized artifacts of all kinds of dark witches, wizards, including the Lestranges. I think that as long as a customer of Gringotts is adhering to their own institutional rules, then no eyebrows will be raised when it comes to extraneous activity. And that's it for this video. Did you ever think about this? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, remember, the world isn't split into good people and death eaters.